This is Twit. I was shocked. <laughs> Even for a product only available from NVIDIA, I was shocked at the pricing on this. $2,999. 12 gigabytes of HMB2 memory, 5,120 CUDA cores. Say it again. 5,120 CUDA cores. Um, you know, uh, and a 1,455 megahertz boost clock. This thing's a beast. Like 110 teraflops yeah. of maximum compute performance. I mean, this is, they call it a consumer graphics card, but this is like calling, you know, a Lamborghini a commuter vehicle. I mean, <laughs> this, may, this is probably it's, more it's practical so, it's than a Lamborghini. Uh, but this thing's, <laughs> yeah. this, this thing's a beast. This is not a gaming card by any normal definition of a gaming card, unless you're, you're the guy who commutes to the grocery store in a Lamborghini with a trailer, because um, you can only fit like a sandwich in the trunk of a Lamborghini. Well, you're the Who's going to buy this? Sip. So, the so guy? the target for this is not is not gaming, right? Like you said, right. it's it's um, it's targeted at developers. It's targeted at machine learning guys, people who are maybe prototyping or building software applications. Um, for GPU compute workloads that don't want to go through the hassle or don't have the capability to integrate their stuff on big server farms or want to get involved with cloud computing based, you know, implementations of GPU compute from Amazon or Microsoft or what have you. And this gives them the flexibility to design on their own system because it's an add-in card. You can use it as your graphics card, all that type of stuff, right? Um, it does do gaming. It will game. Uh, but for three thousand dollars, I think they're I think Nvidia wanted to release this card because they had released the server version, the Tesla V100. Um, it's been, you know, available for a little while. They basically, you know, have come to to they they've they've saturated enough of that space. Like, okay, now what do we go to next? It's these it's these smaller developers, these indie guys, or or companies that are willing to buy these cards for their for their workstations. Um, and you know they they wanted Nvidia wanted to make sure that people didn't make the assumption this was just an overpriced gaming card. So by pricing it at three thousand dollars, they tried to like take it out of the realm of possibility <laughs> to be a gaming card. But also, if you notice, it's called the Nvidia Titan V. It's not called the Nvidia GeForce GTX Titan V. Uh, if you look back at the previous Titan cards, it was the GeForce GTX Titan XP. Right, so it kind of had this mixture of being branded a GeForce card, which is a gaming brand, being branded Titan, which is its unique kind of cut the middle gaming uh, compute professional uh, workload. So by by kind of removing that branding and raising the price, um, they're very make they're making a very clear statement about what the target audience is for the card. Um, it's an impressive. It's the first. It's the first like add-in card with display outputs, which makes it useful for us. That has mm -hmm. display outputs or that has Volta GPU on it, right? So it's the first experience I've been able to get with a, a, a Volta-based graphics card. Now, I want to be clear: Nvidia didn't send these out. They didn't sample us. Uh, we bought it. We, we paid twenty nine ninety nine plus tax Ouch. and plus shipping uh, to get one of these cards in, just because we needed to know. Um, in a similar way. And actually, if you go to the homepage, there's actually a review. The first part of our review is up there, too. Um, we wanted to know, in a similar vein to when in AMD launched the Frontier Edition cards, how this might translate into what the future of gaming cards will be like, right? Can we estimate gaming performance of any upcoming Volta-based graphics cards using the Titan V? It's got its sexy little champagne color. It's built essentially identically to all the Founders Editions cards. Sure. Um, the cooler is upgraded. It's got all copper fins instead of aluminum fins on the vapor chamber. But a couple of things are interesting. If, actually, if you look at that spec table, two things that are interesting, right? You already pointed out the 5,120 GPU cores is well above the next best part from, from NVIDIA. Um, the, the, the clock speeds are a little bit lower, 100 to 200 megahertz, depending on if you're looking at the base or the boost clock. Uh, but look at the ROP count there. The, the the raster operators are the same between the Titan XP and the Titan V, which is interesting because that it's part of a balancing act between how many how much compute do you need to get shading done if you're gaming versus uh, how much work do you need to have done on the pixels for you know anti-aliasing and stuff on the post end. Uh, that's mm -hmm. what ROPs are responsible for. <clears throat> Excuse me, and. Uh, 
you know, the Titan XP had a balance of 3840 to 96. This puts the emphasis much higher on the compute side, indicating that perhaps, again, another iterate, another reason NVIDIA is not <coughs> emphasizing gaming for this particular card, right? Right. So <coughs> that's another way to look at it from a specification standpoint. It's also, also note the memory interface at, it's this is the HBM2, right? So this is the first time we've seen a an add-in card that we can test using gaming that has HBM2 from NVIDIA. Um, it's 12 gigs instead of 16. 16 is what the full full uh, full size GV100 in the Tesla cards offers. Um, but they basically disable one of the HBM stacks on the uh, module in order to lower the memory interface, lower the capacity, lower performance a little bit, create some kind of differentiation between it and the even more expensive than three thousand dollar you know Tesla branded cards. <laughs> the uh, you can you can scroll through a bunch of other like gaming performance stuff. The the general consensus I had after testing this guy is that um, it's about twenty percent faster than a Titan XP. Wow! It's about fifty percent faster than a GTX 1080 Ti, and it's about eighty percent faster than a GTX 1080. Um, to give you some scale, right? So it's actually a pretty impressive boost over current top shipping. And we say that knowing that first of the price per dollar ratio doesn't make any sense. You should not buy this for gaming, but we would, I would expect at least <laughs> the gaming iteration of this card. If when it comes out to be running at higher clock speeds, probably as well, maybe right. being that there's some, a little, there's more performance left on the table here um than then we see right maybe they enable all 128 raster operators on it as well we get a little bit more performance that way um so in terms of just theorizing about what the performance actually looks like um that that's kind of where where we're running at right so it's yeah that that's actually a good table to look at right in uh, fallout 4 at 4k you can see the 20 percent edge the 50 percent, the 82 and then about 75 percent edge over the vegas 64 the current top performing AMD part. So, mm -hmm. you know, had this card come out at $1,500, um, there would be, I think, a groundswell of high, still super high-end enthusiasts that want to buy this for gaming, you know, because you're getting a performance boost over the, the $1,200 Titan XP. Sure. Um, it's still a 250-watt TDP card. It actually used a little bit less power than that. It's an interesting discussion. If you, if you guys want to read the story, you can see more about that. Um, so from a gaming perspective, it actually games really well, just not for 3000 bucks, which again is what <laughs> NVIDIA is trying desperately to make us. They're probably really annoyed that this was the first story posted about the card we bought, but we bought it. We can do whatever the hell we want. Um, the next piece <laughs> that we're working on now, I can, you know, Ken is dutifully typing away on is the, you know, the workstation GPU compute testing of this card, right? So the, the thing about the GPU is not only does it have 5,120 CUDA cores, but it has 640 tensor cores in it as well that are basically exclusively used for machine learning applications. And it's mm -hmm. one of the big things that NVIDIA built into it for its huge machine learning, artificial intelligence, deep learning um, um, push that it's on. So none of the gaming stuff is going to utilize any of that. It takes up a significant amount of die space, and I'm curious to see in our workload, double precision and stuff that maybe uses tensor cores, if we can actually show any benefit to that right. in comparison. So um, it's been an interesting week. It just, this was a total shock to me. Like I had no pre-knowledge that this card was going to be launched. I was at the Qualcomm event and I was walking to dinner, got an email, emailed to people, said, hey, you're going to send us one to review. They said immediately, absolutely not. Uh, so we not bought one and wanted to do some testing. I know. <laughs> I've seen people, uh, pictures on Reddit of people getting like four of these installed into a system. I think we, yeah. So people are, people are nuts. They're going to buy whatever they want, but there are no, if you look at the pictures of the card, there's no SLI connectors on it. So you can't run multi GPU in the way you're thinking. It actually has NV link connectors. And 50 watt card too. I mean, this is actually a yeah. excuse for that 800 to 1200 watt power supply you've been looking for. Finally. <laughs> Finally. So I'll just end it with that. Like it's, it's a super impressive looking card. Um, both in terms of performance and what have you, but at $3,000, you need to have a business reason to really want this. 
and mm-hmm. or you bought Bitcoin in 2010 or something like that, right? Like, so those are the two types of persons that should be looking at, at buying the Titan V. An impressive card for a very specific audience.